Hello everyone. Welcome to the seventh lecture on the memory based question. Today we will discuss about the real analysis from this CSR net December 2023. Myself Dr. Harishkar, I will explain you all this lecture with the help of the shortcut quick. As I explained you my previous lectures that is the ODPD lecture, memory based others as well as the complete PY question series topic wise and the subject wise. You can follow my YouTube channel Dr. Harishkar and you can if you watch all this lecture, you can simply clear the net uh, gate examination in very simple manner. So let's start with this video. So as I this uh, this question I already explained you earlier, but now I got the condition that some student told this condition is also given to you. So what is that? So what is the shortcut tips for you? So remember, whenever you have a function like f1, f2, f3 and so on, like in this case, this is my f1. This is my F2 when it's said to be the continuous. If Fi's are my continuous, then the complete function F is continuous. If Fi's are my differentiable, if each of the Fi are differentiable, then F capital F is also differentiable. And we all know if F is differentiable, then the partial derivative exists. Fine. The question arises is what is the meaning of the uniform continuous? So if you prove that each of the fi's are my co continuous and the coefficients of xi's are bounded, then you can say it implies it's a uc. Now based on this simple text, you can see since this is my polynomial, so every polynomial is my continuous. So it means f1 and f2 are continuous implies capital F is also continuous. Again, it's a polynomial. So it's a differentiable. So it is also differentiable. Since f is differentiable, it means the partial derivative exists, while converse is not true. f is a uniform continuous when, if you prove that each of the fi's are continuous, that's I already proved that, and the coefficients a, b, c, d, f are my bounded. So in the last lecture, if this, condi if this condition is not given to you, then a, b, c, d may or may not be bounded. Then in that case, this option is cancelled out. But right now it is given that they are on the real line. So yes, they are bounded. If they are bounded, then all the four options are correct. Remember, if this condition is not given to you, then the B option is not correct. Okay, F is a cubic polynomial with exactly one real root. Can you think about any of the cubic equation with exactly one root? The smallest one is here. Then capital F is the anti derivative of this. So can you find the antiderivative? So that's x4 over 4 plus x, fine, plus some constant. Or you can see uh, if I simply take 4x cubed plus 1, fine. So then if I integrate them, it's a x4 plus x. So if I take x as a common, then x cubed plus 1. Now clearly says, what is the root of this? 0 minus 1, at least 2 a real root exists so exactly one real root cancel out all the roots are real again cancel out no real root again cancel out so there is exactly i i don't know whether it's exactly or at most fine or at least so yeah that you can check in your question second way what is the second way is if f is a cubic polynomial what does that means capital f it is my degree four so once it's of the degree 4, then either all are my complex roots, fine, or it has a 2 real roots, or it can never be the 3 real roots, or it can have a 4 real roots, because complex number always occur in the pair. So one real root, not possible, because if one real root possible means 3 complex number. So exactly one is again cancel, all the roots are real, that that may be possible but it is not all for example like of this exactly two real roots that may be possible no real root again not possible so the right answer is c you can check whether it's exactly at most or something is given to you okay f is given as a continuous function on this which of the following is my hold remember if you remember my earlier tips i gave you this condition this is my zero provided limit n approaches infinity if f is my continuous on close interval but here you can see this condition is not given to you now how you can solve that again a very simple 
you can see minus 1 to 1 it will be 0 for odd cases look at start from n is even you can choose any even let's say n is my 2 fx is any continuous function can it be 0 you can choose fx is my x fine so clearly say this integration is 0 but f is my non 0 so this option is cancel out similarly for all the odd if i simply n to be any odd let's say x cube can you choose any of the fx so that this, this integration will be 0 only when it will be odd so i can choose as a x squared fine so this is my fx so then this number is my odd the sum of this will always be the odd number so what does it means this is my 0 but this is again non zero this option is also cancel out this case it's set for all n so either if it is for the even or for the odd but you can never find a single polynomial n can you find if i take n is 2 then it will be non zero for the other case so that means this integration is zero only when f of x will be my zero so this option is the right answer Again, he said for all polynomials, so if I simply take the polynomial is x square, then it will be the case. But if I take the polynomial as a x cube, then fx will not be happening for this. So it means this is also the right answer. So A and B are my correct option. Okay, find the infimum of this. So can you find the root of this? It can be written as x minus 3, x minus 6, which is less than 0. So what does it mean? It lies between 3 to 6. It's an equality, so it's a close interval 3 to 6. For this case, I can return as a x minus 3, x minus 4. So it lies between 3 to 4. Because of this comma, that means this is an intersection. So roots are lies between minus uh, plus 3, plus 4. So what is the infimum of this? Infimum is my plus 3 is the right answer of the problem. You can change the option if whatever the answer uh, options are given to because these are the memory base. So that I got from the students, they are set 2, 3, 4, 5. If somebody asks you, infimum of u is minus 3, again this option is cancelled. So right option is third is the right answer. Okay, that is uh, why I consider this example because some student asked me that sir, can I take this is less than of 1 by n, fine. And this is my divergent by the p test. Always remember, students, whenever you consider a n is less than of b n, whenever you consider less than sign, it must be convergent. It must be the convergent. Then only you can consider as a less than sign. If you consider a n is my greater than of b n, then if you take a greater than, then it must be divergent. It must be divergent. Now you can see, you consider the less than sign, but this is not convergent. It means you can't return like this man. Fine. Now, now you can see about, for example, again, if I simply take the example is my this, you all know this number is less than of this. If I consider th this is my series, fine. And this is my divergent, but you can see that this is less than sign. We can't see anything about this. So how you can solve this? You can remember that if you have the product of the two series, if you prove the one series is my bounded, other series is my approaches toward the zero and decreasing, then it is my convergent. So clearly say if I take a n is my sign, then it is a bounded. B n I can consider as one over root n. It is a great approaches toward the zero and decreasing. So yes, this is my convergent. Now, look about this, this series. If I consider a n is my ln 1 plus 1 over n square, then I can take b n is my 1 over n square. So, a n over b n is n square log of 1 plus 1 over n square. If I take the limit as n approaches infinity, what will happen? So, it's an infinity of this. So, I can return this number as log of 1 plus n square of n square. Now clearly say this term as I take n approaches infinity, it is 1 over infinity form. So what is the rule for that? As I told you in the earlier, whenever this equation will be form of this, then 
you can simply write this as a e of e into f into g so that means this is log of e f into g take the limit as n approaches infinity so what is that it's a log of e that is a 1 which is a non zero so but this is my convergent by the p test so therefore this is also convergent otherwise you can apply as a infinity by infinity rule or zero by zero rule or you can solve it by allopater rule but that is a quite easier rule as i explained you earlier okay which of the following is my here so whenever it's a minus 1 to n you can break it as n is even and n is odd when n is even this is my positive so if i take the lcm it is my 5 n pi over 6 when i take n is odd then this is my negative then this number will be my n pi over 6 it's a minus n pi over 6 but cos is always a positive number then supremum of a n this is my a n what is the maximum value of this supremum so supremum is always be less than or equal to 1 but he said root 2 is a wrong option infimum of a n what is the minimum of this is minus 1 but he said plus half again this is cancelled a of 2 n 2 n is my even number what is the supremum of this what is the maximum value of this is 1 so yes this is the right answer 3 n supremum of 3 n so 3 n consists of even number e 3 n consists of the odd number as well like 6 and 9 so if i taken from this the supremum from here is minus 1 supreme uh, supremum of this is plus 1 supremum of this is my plus 1 so both the cases as a plus 1 but he said minus 1 so the right answer is b is the correct option there is no need to solve the problem just always look about my shortcut tricks always appear as a two cases okay this question i already explained in my previous lecture but i got some mistakes so that's why i rectify here so if i write for this case so x is 0 1 2 3 4 this is my 1 2 1 3 5 fine now you can see this is the equally likely fine so i can find the divided difference del del square del cube uh, five points so maximum four of this so what is that it's a one it's a minus one two and two it's a minus two it's a three it's a zero this is five it's a minus 3 then it's a minus 8 then because we need a coefficient of the x cube so i consider only these pairs so what is the del cube 5 divided by 3 factorial fine into is a cube so is i consider the first three pair x x minus 1 x minus 2 plus third pair is minus 8 divided by 4 factorial it's a four pair so x x minus 1 x minus 2 x minus 3 now you can solve it i can take x x minus 1 x minus 2 as a common next one is 5 over 6 8 over 24 x minus 3 now you can see this is x cube minus 3x square plus 2x so it will be 5 over 6 minus 1 over 3x minus minus plus 1 so what is the coefficient of the x cube from here it is 5 over 6 plus 1 and based on this it will be here so it is plus 1 so what is that 5 over 6 plus 2 it is my 17 over 6 is the right answer earlier i just considered only this term i forget to consider this fourth power also so that's why the right answer is d is the correct answer okay this is some statistics question but usually the people ask you how you can solve that what is given to you expected value of the x size expected value of the y i's are zero variance of x variance of y are same some students told me that standard deviations are same if standard deviation same it again implies variances are same so what is the ratio of this if i consider this is my alpha and this is my beta so my target is to find alpha over beta so we all know what is the variance e x square minus e x whole square fine this variance are same so i can return this number as here e y square minus e y of whole square clear 
Now these values are same, so it is a cancel out because they are zero. What is the e of x square? It is summation of x i square over n. So for the case of this is my here, this is my one fifty y i square over one fifty. So that means what is the value of the alpha or beta? Hundred over one fifty. So two over three is the right answer of this problem. So this is the way you can solve it in a very simple manner. I will come up with. I hope you can simply learn the various tricks how you can solve these problems in a very simple manner. I will come up with my next lecture. Till now, you can simply like, share, and comment these videos. You can share with your friends. Thank you very much.